Hello and welcome. I am not a happy person this morning. And why is that so? It's amazing that you could actually watch the country going so very, very bad and you can actually see people who don't care, who pretend they feel the country is good. I am not a happy person and I'm not pretending about it. This is not about making a video this morning. It's about expressing how I truly feel and I'm not happy at all. Now, a couple of days ago, we organized a crusade with an attempt to unite the people of the Southeast. And by Southeast, once again, I mean the entire 11 states. Forget that now some of us are foolishly still thinking that uh, we have the leverage of thinking that we are Niger Delta, we are South South, we are this and we are that. I have long outgrown that uh, primordial sentiment. However, today I'm going to talk about something because when I was traveling down for this crusade, a question keep reoccurring in my mind and that question is, how is it possible that Nigeria with a population of close to 200 million individuals or 200 pop million populace can be controlled and manipulated by one tribe. I'm sure a lot of you have also asked that question. How is it possible that the Fulani tribe is now the dominant tribe that shapes and determines whatever happens in the country, who becomes what, what gets what, where it's relevant, where it's not relevant, who is relevant, who is not relevant. How is it possible? I'm sure a lot of us have asked this question. And uh, today I'm going to attempt to give the solution to that, I mean the answers to that question. And believe me when I tell you that they are not far-fetched. It, it's, it's really a pity. It's really a pity. Some of us don't want to be slaves. Some of us don't want to be under the rule and control of these people. But we don't want to do the things that will save us from being ruled by these people. So it's funny. First, on one instance, you don't want to be controlled. You don't want to be a slave. But you don't want to do the things that will take you away from being that slave. It's a strange paradox. Sometimes wrapping my head around these thoughts, sometimes I, 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 I am almost losing. I tend to almost lose my mind. Now, the Fulani Caliphate, they came into Nigeria and studied Nigeria and realized that they have the key that unlocks the mumu of every region. In other words, they have a way to, you know, activate the stupidity of every region. And once that is activated, that region or group of people or people or persons become susceptible to their rules and control. So I'm going to take us step by step how they are able to manipulate each people. Now let me tell you the Fulani tribe is not the most populous tribe in Nigeria. It's not even the second most populous tribe. Neither is it the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. They are somewhere around 11, 12, 13 or so. Because the Fulani tribe is not more than the Yoruba population. It's not more than the Ijo population. It's not more than the Yoruba population. It's not more than the Hausa population. Now, what you see and may think that they have population is because of the strategic way they have blended into the Hausa community. And sometimes we tend to think that when you see an Hausa man, that is enough, it's a full animal. No, 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 no. No, there's a great distinction between a full animal and a Hausa man. Even an Hausa man will tell you that. But let's study step by step how they are able to take every region and make every region their stooge. It's a very simple strategy. First of all, they have one thing for them. They have a strong bond, strong unity, which is the same unity I've been fighting to bring and sow in the south in the southeast. They have that. That is the only thing they have. Unity. No full animal will come to the public and and um, and uh, abuse another full animal. No full animal will kill another full animal. No full animal will betray another full animal. No full animal will cheat another full animal. No full animal will. It's a code, and everybody imbibe imbibe by that code. That is why you see Buari um, Atiku. Sorry, Atiku will not directly say you, 
watch run. You cannot hold Atiku to anything that this is something he says against APC or against uh, Buari or against any other person. So it's a strong code, which every other tribe lacks. We, they don't have that code. Well, the Yoruba have something close to it, but they have something else that make that code that that make that code not to work for them. They are mostly self-centered, so such a code will not work uh, for them. The Fulani man is not self-centered. The Fulani man can make sacrifice for his brother if it's going to satisfy a general purpose. One person can sacrifice for the other person. We don't have that. It's always about me. It's always about what I get when I'm in the south. It's always about what what is the need for me. So let me take everything step by step. You see, the Fulani and the houses, the Fulani are able to get the houses in line because the first thing they did was to obliterate the culture and tradition of the Hausa man. The Hausa man has no tradition, has no culture. What he thinks he has in, in the place of tradition and culture is religion. And don't forget the the the, the religion that the Hausa man practices mostly is the one that is brought to them by uh, the Dam for the who obviously is a full animal. So, an Hausa man practices Islam because he believes it is faith. And so he doesn't bother if it is the full animal as the head of the mosque, but he believes he is practicing a faith. Now, in a feudal system where some people agree that they are Talakawas, Talakawas are the ordinary people on the street or the poor people. So it is easy to make certain people believe that this is where they belong. And I, in, indeed, it may surprise you that in the 21st century, we actually have that kind of social system here where certain people believe that this is who they are. And then those people at the top, that is the elite who are rich, who go to good school, who don't beg on the street, that is where they are. That is why you could see a statement here. I've said it several times that uh, you could see somebody here saying that uh, Allah Ebaka Kabani, which means God should give to you so that you can give to me. You know, a mind frame that can utter that kind of statement simply means such a person is distributioned or such a person has no dream to aspire to becoming great. That is why you will depend on somebody to have before you get Allah Ebaka Kabani. So it's it's really it's really funny. So what the strategy that the Fulani used to get the Hausa people is to first obliterate their culture. So the Hausa man has no culture, has no tradition. All he has is religion that is superseded or controlled or orchestrated or overseen by the Fulani Caliphate. So the Hausa man will believe that he's practicing the religion when in actual fact, is practicing a religion that says he must be submissive to the Fulani Caliphate. And that is why you see the Hausas will always do the Fulani bidding when it comes to politics because they believe they are doing it against the South. But in actual fact, they are yes doing it against the South, but for the interest and advantage of the Fulani Caliphate. So that is what is happening in the North. So if we leave the core North and go to the Middle Belt, for me, if I make any reference to Middle Belt, I'm referring to part of Middle Belt that is in the north and part of Middle Belt that is in the south. Because in my previous videos, I have said that there is nowhere in geography where you have a northern hemisphere bigger than a southern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is the same, which is why we have an equator. Now, in Nigeria, the equator of Nigeria is where Abuja is. Because if you fold Nigeria into two, if you have it in a map, in a paper, and you fold it into two equal half, and, you know, uh, stretch the middle, you find that Abuja is indeed in the center. So if Abuja is in the center of Nigeria, which is the equator of Nigeria, why then do we have places like um, like Benue, Kwara, Taraba, part of Plateau, Nasarawa, all those places that naturally should be southern region, why are they referred to as north? So when I say Middle Belt, I'm referring to those parts that the part of Middle Belt that is in the south and the part of Middle Belt that is in the north. Now, the, the, the way the Fulanese captured the Middle Belt is simple. They simply rob them of their identity. When you tell a Middle, man, a middle Belt man, where are you from? He said, I'm a Middle Belt. Even though he knows that there is no such thing as Middle Belt in the map, but you prefer to say he's a Middle Belt man. But if you insist that he must choose between south and north, where he belongs. He will tell you he's a northerner. Why is that so? He's, he has been infected with the language. He speaks mostly Hausa. Even though 
He speaks Hausa. An average middle belt man will speak more of Hausa than his own language with another fellow language. Let's say um, a Jarawa man, for instance, who has Jarawa as his language. You find that a Jarawa man may have spoken more of Hausa language than his own Jarawa language, even with his own tribal brother or his own tribal uh, uh, lineage lineages rather you get me and a man is a product of the language he speaks if you speak more of yoruba i have a friend who is an ijo man but he speaks more of yoruba and you see when he begins to speak his english language he, he, his, his language is uh, his intonation is affected by the yoruba language but he's an ijo his father is ijo his mother is, is ijo but he stayed in in yoruba place so he speaks more of yoruba and therefore his accent has been you know affected so such a person would think that he's yoruba than ijo even though he knows he was he was born ijo man his father is ijo but he speaks more of the language so man is a product of the language he speaks consistently so we are talking about the middle bed so they are robbed of the identity. The middle bed really does not know where they are. Are they southerners or are they northerners? So such a people are merely flowing, you know, just flowing. They are neither here nor there. So, and the, the, the caliphate knows this, that they are really not northerners. But to keep them, to keep the psychology, you know, the, the mind is the greatest asset of, of a human being. It is easier to free a flesh from a prison cell or from a prison camp or from anywhere. But it's very difficult to set the mind free. It is very, very difficult. If it is almost near impossible to free a mind that is captured. And that is what is happening with the middle belt. Now, they speak more of the language of the cornered. And a lot of them, their brothers have accepted the religion, Islam. So they have they feel they have more things in common with the northerners, with the corner, because of the language they speak, and because of their brothers who have embraced the main religion of the of the corner. And therefore, they feel they are closer to the people that oppress them than the people that really want to liberate them. If an house, if if a true a uh, middle belt man has a choice between a core northern and in a presidential election and, a, and an Igbo man, for instance. He will choose the core northern man against the Igbo man because of the tales the caliphate has sown in him about the Igbo man. But let's take it. I'm going to come there. I'm going to come there. So that's about the middle belt. The caliphate has robbed the middle belt of their identity. They really don't have an identity. Yes, some of them may have their culture which is not totally gone. But the caliphate, in order to make these people continuously think they are northerners, that is why you see anytime they have a northern governor's forum, watch it, think back, you see that they always make so either somebody from Benue, not now that uh, the governor of Benue state has fallen off with uh, the Romans, they either make somebody from Benue or Plateau or Taraba, those states they perceive as core Christian states, they always make them to continue feed them that they continue feeding them that, feeding the mind that you are a northerner. If you are not northerner, how can we give you a great position as, as being chama, uh, governor's chairman? But in truth, the, the gov that, that position is really, <laughs> is really less than nothing because you can't call the shots, you can't influence anything. All you just have is just northern governor's chairman, and that's all. Why is it that when Ness is now the Arewa Consultative Forum. That's the that's the that's the forum that that takes the decision. That's the forum that 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 calls the shot. That's the forum that determines what happens in the north. Why don't they make somebody from Benue, Plateau, or Taraba as the chairman of Arewa Consultative Forum? So you you could see the strategy, the political strategy with which the caliphate is using to hold the north. They, they mean the middle belt to themselves. You see, if you want to fight somebody, I keep telling people that this is a mind game. It's not a physical game. I pity Sowery. I feel for him. But you didn't play. You didn't play it. You didn't play the mind game. You don't play it that way. You, you, you play mind. It's a mind game. You have to. You have, it's a mind game. So that's about the middle belt. I'm using all these caliphate description of the region for simplicity of understanding. Otherwise, Nigeria should be divided into four regions. 
northeast, northwest, southwest, southeast. That is how I see it with my common sense. But for purpose of understanding me, that's why I'm using this uh, gregarious terms of middle belt uh, bullshit babangida description of Nigeria. So the southwest, how is the caliphate able to manipulate the southwest? First and foremost, they understand that the, the southwest have strong ethnic affiliation that everybody knows. Strong ethnic affiliation. It is difficult to separate the Yoruba man from his ethnic affiliation. Just today, I saw somebody on social media who was telling me that he will die after Tinubu, he will die after Osibanjo. It doesn't matter whether these two people are leading them astray. They are Yoruba, we must follow them. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. You don't, you, you don't just follow somebody blindly just because you have a tribal affinity with the person and therefore, if it's destroying your land, no problem. He's my tribal man. I must follow him. It's bullshit to me. It's, it's, it's rubbish. That's absolute rubbish to me. So, they understand that the, the Yoruba man is self-centered, very, very self-centered. It's all about what is good for me. You get me? And these people, they love position. Love position. That's why anytime they want to use it, just give them position. Vice president. And they are all happy. Even though the position amounts to nothing to them, they are happy. They are ready to die for the people who 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 is able to make them that. And that's one thing about we Southerners. We, we tend to believe that to become relevant in Nigeria, we must depend on the approval of the caliphate. And I begin to wonder why, how? The people who contribute less than nothing to the general welfare of Nigeria, the people who contribute almost nothing, whether intellectual, sports, economy, law, almost nothing they contribute not, and yet we rely on them to be relevant because they say in terms of power, that should be with us. You can control economy, you can control finance, you can control, but power will come to us. And we say, yes, it's bullshit, man. Haba. So, and the Yoruba man again finds it very difficult to embrace other people. The Yoruba man is embracing the outside people, not because really it is their nature to embrace other tribes. It's because a lot of, I mean, close to 60 or 50 percent, 50 to 60 percent of the Yoruba population has embraced Islam. So it is the Islamic affiliation that is dragging the Yoruba people with the caliphate, not because the Yorubas have an opening to embrace other, other tribes. It's always about Yoruba and what is need for Yoruba and that's all. The reason why the Yorubas hate Good Lord Jonathan is not because Good Lord Jonathan actually did anything bad to them. It's because they've been so used to the fact that they, they are always at the top of government ranking. Either they are number one or Sibanjo or number two, number one, number two. Number. But in Good Lord Jonathan's time, that is the only time the Yoruba man did not taste number one, they did not taste number two, they did not taste number three, they did not taste number four, they didn't even taste number five. So basically it was as if the Good Lord Jonathan government didn't have them in play. But they forgot that they just enjoyed eight years in Obasanjo before Good Lord Jonathan came in. So these are people that are very, very self -centered. And don't know, when I say this, I feel very bad. I feel very bad. I am, I, I, I say it is whether you are Hausa, Yoruba, or my people, because I'm going to come to them later, then you know that I'm not being biased. I have to say this thing. Somebody has to say this thing some, you know, continuously. Now, that's about the Yoruba uh, people. So, um, they are selfish, self-centered, and they lack the ability to embrace other tribe that is not Yoruba into them. They don't have that cooperation. Even among themselves. They don't even have the trust among themselves. It's okay. So that's about the Yoruba. Then, the Southeast. How is the Caliphate controlling the Southeast? When I say the Southeast, I'm talking about the Igbo, the Ikwere, the Robo, the Edo. Forget that. Some will say they are from Middle West. Niger Delta. South, South, Southeast. I don't buy that crap. I cannot answer to the name that the caliphate gave to my people. It is Babangida that divided us into South-South and South-East for a good reason. So I cannot subscribe to a division imposed by the caliphate to make us easy for them to control. For those of you who insist on referring to themselves as South, South, South East and whatever, that is you. You keep referring to that name or keep accepting that name, you keep becoming the slave for, of, to the people that you are, that is killing you. You get me? So, the way the South, uh, the Caliphate has controlled the South is that 
the, the, the southeastern man is very, 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 very greedy and worships money. When I was traveled last week when I was in Delta State, I stopped at Onisha and somebody stopped me. Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? I, uh, enter. I go carry you. How much? 500. I go. And he took me to somewhere else. Eventually, I took another uh, machine again. He took me around, took me around, took me around that place. That wasn't where I was going. He took 500 for me. I started abusing and getting very, very angry until um, the, the, the person said, another person said, okay, come, where are you going? I, he spoke outside to me. The irony is that he's an outside man. He took me to another place, to the real place I was going, and he said it's 17 naira. I was going to give him money. He said, no, I should keep it. I had to force him, practically beg him to accept 200 naira before he took the 200, 200 naira. Now, my own people couldn't, I was inquiring about the place, and they saw me as a stranger, and, and they saw me as a godly person to cheat and extract money from. A people like that cannot progress in a political atmosphere like that of Nigeria. So they believe, they use our greed. That's why they attempt to give us money. When they give us money, they want to buy us over. And then the other part, like the the other, the south-south part, I, you are feeding the country and then you still depend. You know, it's amazing that somebody from the south-south, if you permit me to use that word, they gave you deputy senate president. You are so happy about it to the point that you are so happy about it because you know that you, you believe you cannot get to that position without the approval of the caliphate. You are so happy about it, you can even go on your knees for it. Now, what the South South people lack is political pride, political arrogance, political status. You forgot that when they made Sambo a northern man, vice president, what happened? The youths in Kaduna went and burnt his house because they felt it was beneath them. To be second to a minority man. But here we have our own number four. He's so happy. Senate, deputy Senate president. And he's going down on his knees. Thanking God. If not for the caliphate, I wouldn't be here. I, I don't know if, if, if you should. It's a, it's, a, it, 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 it's a shame for me. We need to have that political arrogance. Even if you have it and them, keep your own. It's, it is not naturally it should be yours and show that you don't need to go down on your knees. Bullshit, man. So, the point of it in conclusion is that these people have the um, the key to unlock everything. So, but generally, generally, I will end this video by saying that if we don't have the ability to take ourselves off those primordial sentiments that no, I'll be a job. Ijo is bigger than Ibo. No, Abi Ibo. Ibo is the three wise men. They are the father of everybody. No, Abi Robo. I won't do it, Ibo. Ibo will come and dominate me. No, Abi Kalaba. Kalaba is not Ibo. No, Abi Delta Ibo. The, 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 the divisiveness have so penetrated. Look, the most divisive, the, 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 the most, the place you get this divide and rule strategy is more in the south, 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 or southeast region rather. So, I still believe that the day we get out of this bloody bullshit South uh, Midwest, Niger Delta, South South, Southeast, and begin to see ourselves as a bigger block, that is the only day we will get out of this. They will keep killing you if you still think you will remain this small, small divisive regions. Thank you very much for watching.